lead you there. We have, of course, Discord, the rules. If you check, want to check out what the rules are for the tournament, you can check out rules and then results as we get uh, winners to the tournament. But now one of my favorite parts is I get to uh, introduce my, the first guest that we have for the stream. Uh, I'm going to be joined for this first cast since Freddie is actually going to be a contestant. Crow Ravel is going to be joining uh, as our first guest. So, Crow, how are you doing, sir? Oh, I'm I'm doing wonderful. Are you hyped for this event? Uh, I have moderate expe expectations. I'm an uh, FCL uh, player. You don't you don't get hyped. You you, you don't know get that the <laughs> awfulness is going to happen at some point. So you just that's true. You just you're even keel about all things. If you if you get too excited, FTL will just crush your expectations, right? Yes. That is what she does. <laughs> well, just a little info. Uh, this is my first time to get to, uh, to chat and hang out with you, Crow. So for those on my stream or who are not uh, 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 up on Crow, he's another FTL content creator who plays with pause. It looks like you have a win rate of 93% over your last 230 plus runs. Is that right? That is correct. How uh, currently on a, have you done that? <laughs> uh, well, it helps. I'm currently on a 50 win streak right now. Um, I have about I have over 3,000 hours in FTL, watched a bunch of other players. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a long process to get, I guess, good and consistent. Well, well so that's pretty amazing to have uh, to have that much consistency. So I'm going to be asking you a lot during these runs what our, what our contestants are going to be doing to get, you know, uh, a consistent chance of winning with whatever ship they choose. So... Thank you for joining the cast, my friend. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, I will I will judge them harshly, but fairly. <laughs> Harsh but fair, just like FTL. Wait, mm -hmm. no, FTL's never fair. So uh, let's now introduce our awesome contestants, uh, which we have, first of all, Freddie, uh, a, a familiar face uh, everyone should know from the casting. How are you doing, Freddie? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm doing uh, well today. Thank you for having me on. And I'm looking forward to being judged uh, fairly and harshly. <laughs> Good. I'll, I'll leave the harsh and fair to Crow. I'll just make fun of you, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, whatever you want to do, I can handle it. I've, I've, I've got also 3,000 hours in the game, and, my, and I'm used to harshness, and, uh, you know, it just rolls off like water. Uh, <laughs> so I'm used to it by now. Well, awesome. It's glad to have you here. I look forward to casting with you later. And uh, we're going to see how you do against our next contestant, who is Retreat Retreat. Can you hear me, Retreat? Hello. Yep. How are you doing, sir? Are you ready for this competition? I mean, sure. Let's see how it goes, how it unfolds. Have you been practicing a lot for this? I mean, like Freddy, I think every contestant has like a couple thousand hours in the game already. Mm -hmm. So like there is like nothing to practice that would fundamentally alter the gameplay so not really true you just got to get i guess probably the biggest challenge is getting uh practice in this format since it's kind of a faster run with high scores a little different than like speed running or score farming some of the others so i'm really interested to see how everyone plays and matches up so if we are ready with um uh Kisalian, i think we're going to do our pick man phase so if you want to bring up the three ships i believe it was the stealth a uh, Slug C and Kestrel A, I believe, were the three uh, ships that were picked. And so, uh, Kisalian, can you remind me who has first ban for this one? Freddy, it sounds like you have the first ban. What are you going to ban, sir? I am not a big fan of the chain laser, so I'm going to say Slug C. Okay. Mm, Slug good C. choice. And what about you, Retreat? Retreat, what is your ban? Ban Kestrel A. Ban Kestrel A. All right. So it looks like we got Stealth A. And I know there's a five-minute delay, Kassalian, but I'm hearing people say no audio and that I was muted. I don't know. I. Well, I don't know. I just hear a couple people saying that. Okay. 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 All right. So we got the Stealth A, which is a great ship, and uh, definitely for this first round should see some good so play and kind of hopefully some high scores. Uh, Crow yeah, Ravel, sure. as the consistency expert, how do you get consistent wins on a on a Stealth A? Uh, well, Stealth A is 
probably it's like the first kind of challenge ship you get because it doesn't have shields, but it is incredibly consistent for the most part. Um, uh, there's actually a different couple schools of thought. Some people like to upgrade weapons first. Some people do cloaking first. Some people just hold on to all their money and try to get to a store. Um, but once you do that, like if the other thing is like the lat kind of the piece for that ship, aside from like some shields, is just getting hacking. Uh, with hacking, you essentially just need one other weapon, and the starting weapons will carry you through the run. Um, so you have that going for you. It's not a lot of scrap investment for your offense. And uh, with that, you also get a lot of money because you do have long range scanners. So you find all the fights, you have cloaking and it allows you to dive pretty aggressively, unlike a lot of other ships. So uh, yeah, I know a lot of people do consider uh, the Stealth A to be a top tier ship. Well, I definitely consider it and I'm really psyched to see how uh, Freddy and Retreat Retreat do it. So let's, let's move over to the game screen and I can give our contestants the seed and we'll be ready to get going here. And uh, final words before we go. Uh, what do you think, Freddie? You feeling good about uh, Stealth A? You ready for this one? Ready to go. Feeling good. Retreat, retreat. Are you feeling strong for the Stealth A? How do you feel on this one? I mean, sure. Just kill everything you see and go. <laughs> just kill everything. <laughs> good kill plan. Everything win. <laughs> All righty. So I see our players are both on the Stealth A. I'm going to give the seed right now. And I'm going to read it out and also type it in the Discord just so you have both. So it's going to be four, six, seven, eight, two, three. Four, six, seven, eight, two, three. Four, six, seven, eight, two, three. All right. I see both players on Stealth A. I see the uh, seed ready to go. So, Freddy Z, you ready? All right, retreat, retreat. How are you doing? You ready to go, sir? Yep, ready. Okay. Couple last minute adjustments and mutes. And here we go. In three, two, one, go, my friends. All right, the first ship, Stealth A. So you are you find this pretty consistent, hey, Crow? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's... Like normally I judge ships, uh, their quality based on how easily they get through the first sectors. Those are typically mm -hmm. the most dangerous sectors in FTL. Um, and again, ruthlessly efficient weapons, cloaking uh, help in a lot of that regard. Ooh, fire early though. Oh yeah, early fire beam is not what you want to see on Stealth A. That's a double yeah. fire in O2. Whew. Okay. Uh, rigor ships in general or anything with drone control in the early sectors tend to be some of the most dangerous ships, mm -hmm. uh, particularly if you don't have shields. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's it's no stealth beast. So at least your weapons are faster, but that's that's a pretty rough start to get an immediate beam, but he's handling it pretty well, I would say. Yeah. Uh, retreat, retreat gets through the first fight pretty quick because he didn't have a beam drone with fire immediately in his O2. FTL doing its normal FTL things, I would say. <laughs> does like to do FTL things. So with your with your 93% win ratio, have you is that with random ships? How do you choose your ships for your, for uh, your So uh, I do, with pause, win streaking, uh, random ships. So I just hit the random button if I've already won with that ship on the streak, hit mm -hmm. random again until I get something new. And then once I got through the 28, um, just start all over again. Okay, all right. True true random being at the, at the whims of RNGesus, it sounds like. Yeah, it's I think it's it's kind of more interesting as a like a broadcaster that like, you know, mm -hmm. people get to see all the ships versus like if you're if you're selecting, which does make the cycle a little bit easier if that's your end goal, mm -hmm. um, because you can just front load the ships you're not as good with or uh, sure. generally worse. Um, yeah. But then you're typically just going to be running Stealth B a whole lot um, or, <laughs> you know, Rock yeah. A. And then it's like, oh well, I'm just gonna be running those ships for the next three days until we get through the first five or six, and then. I I'm glad you. I'm those, glad you mentioned those. Are those, those are two of my least mainly rock ships. A, mainly Rocket A, just because I hate missiles. And uh, oh looks right, like right. Retreat, retreat's got another one of those fire beam drones. That's that's pretty unlucky to get some early fire beam drones this on this ship. Yeah, but at least it's a fire beam drone, and it's not uh you know it's not a combat one or a beam mm -hmm. one, beam two. Those and things Freddy, are really nasty. Freddy getting one of my least favorite things, an early shot to the weapons. He did get the weapons offline, but it looks like I think it was a burst laser that took his weapons offline, which is always the worst. 
Yeah, it doesn't seem like you put the buffer point in weapons, which is uh, it's a 25 scrap investment. Oh. I've had a hazard last event. Um, yeah. Is that like, what you so, like it, to do with your first scrap? Do the weapon uh, It is what I like to do with the first scrap on this particular ship. Um, it gives you that buffer point, so you can even take two damage, and at least your dual laser is still online, able to, mm -hmm. you know, try and keep yourself alive. Or it gives you, like I said, that one damage buffer point is pretty nice. nice. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, and that Sector 1 Zoltan Shield ship. At least there's no missile. Although I would say probably missile would be less scary with Stealth A than most other ships since it's a shieldless ship to start. Yeah, particularly against a pike beam. Yeah. That's pike beam pretty gross. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, they're, I'd say they're both fairly close uh, in this Sector 1. They're both doing pretty darn well to start, I would say. Oh, Retreat's found a small bomb from uh, a fight. That's actually really nice. So with the uh, buffer point, you can just power that, get that to go right online, get an additional two damage um, to systems. That's okay. pretty beneficial. Oh, yeah. And with that buffer point, that's that's a... He's got. He's only got one missile, so he's going to run out pretty quickly. But if you could use that strategically, that could be really useful. Right. Yeah, uh, the mini beam is like pretty phenomenal weapon in general. Uh, you only get it on two ships though: uh, the, this ship, the Stealth A, and the Stealth C. And the Stealth C, um, yeah. But you can hit as many as four rooms with certain swipes. Uh, every tile it crosses through has a ten percent chance of fire, so you can actually mm -hmm. get a surprising amount of like crew kills with it. Yeah, crew killing with a mini beam. That's something that I would say it's kind of a more advanced strategy that. I'm guessing a lot of streakers and people who are going for consistency would use because you usually get better rewards for, for crew killing, right? Yeah, in general, crew kills are like 15% better scrap. You kind of hit into the uh, high scrap rewards. You get a one in nine chance of a crew member or a free item as well. Uh, and that's like that can easily make the difference between a run because those items, even if you don't need it, you can just sell it for more scrap. Mm -hmm. And that's it's, when you're playing a hard difficulty, you need every little bit of tiny scrap you can eke out of ftl yeah yeah any advantage you can get uh you know within within reason you know there's definitely like really viable strategies but sometimes they can just take an enormous amount of time to do and so you got to like weigh that like do i really want to sit here for half an hour trying to shoot down drones <laughs> so i can get through Maybe that's not. one thing i'm most impressed with uh the consistent triggers like hollow with his crazy note pause you, you have to be so patient sometimes to make the act absolute min max play um yeah yeah well i've uh recently uh past couple months mike uh hopley has been uh streaming and mm -hmm. the patience on him is absolutely absurd um <laughs> he does he does these challenge runs with like uh he's trying to beat all the ships without using a uh, shield system uh, wow. i think has like 24 of them down two are on like a balance mod so that's uh, kind of a goal that he's set for himself. And that's a huge handicap, because if you're not using shields on a ship that starts with shields, you're basically short a system, if I'm understanding the challenge. Yeah, I think he just leaves it at level one and damage. Okay. Like, he mods that out, and then that's it. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, so I think we're coming into the end of Sector 1. Freddy's a little ahead in scrap. I'm wondering if he is going for that. He did get that sh uh, weapon value point. He just didn't get that small bomb like Retreat got. Um let's see i'm wondering if he's going to save up for some early shields because that's what i like to do on this ship i if i don't have shields early i feel so exposed going into sector two and three that's for sure yeah so if you go to a store there and it's selling systems it will be selling you a shield system um hacking is also another option if you have like really good weapons mm -hmm. you can really kind of try and front load that kind of turn yourself into a mini stealth b if you want to okay like maybe go ahead upgrade cloaking pre-cloak fights your weapons are going to be firing at 10 11 seconds yeah Go for the best defense is a good offense strategy. Yeah, sometimes that can be the case. So Freddy must have already been in Sector 7. Uh, Sector 7. Sector 2, because he's fighting... Really an, fast. <laughs> that would be really fast. But he's fighting a, a, an early Lania ship, so he must have gone abandoned already. I must have missed that. That's that's pretty bold. Do you like an early Sector 2 abandoned? Uh, Sector 2, Sector 3 abandoned are amazing. They're actually like one of the highest scrap gain sectors on average okay. um they have lots of double rewards and because it's sector two sector three you don't have to worry about lanius bombers those ships only show up in sector four the main That's... of many players the Lanius yeah bomber. yeah they 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 do have a reputation of being some of the most <laughs> uh 
awful ships to come across because they will have like the three specialty systems so you can run into the old cloaking mind control and boarding get multiple Oof. ladies on board it's that double lane is boarding that's scary that's scary Ooh, retreat gets a free ng you gotta love a free ng oh yeah ng's uh, best crew ng best crew i i see freddy got he must have had the same event because it looks like he also has the free ng i would say freddy's a little ahead right now because he's in sector two a couple jumps and retreats a couple jumps behind did retreat i think he did not take the abandoned sector if i saw correctly um, mm. i have to check if he took uh i mean he's in a nebula so it's possibly took an uncharted nebula if that was a choice are you are you not a fan of early nebulas? I mean, you have long range scanners. Oh, I I generally like nebulas unless I'm looking for a store. Um, sure, you have the possibility of running into like ion storms or plasma storms. No, oh, no, he's still at the edge of sector oh, one. Oh, so he he's actually diving. Yet. He's going to take a sector one dive. That is pretty brave. It's in a nebula, so he's yeah, hoping the just... score will be worth. Yeah, I mean, if the exit's in a nebula, so you don't have to worry about an ASB, and it's the exit jump. So normally, if you dive in a nebula, it's not the exit jump. It becomes an ion storm, even if it wasn't beforehand. Mm. So you're going to be dealing with the hat power. But that's not really an issue here. And, I mean, he has some fairly solid weapons. Mm -hmm. We'll have to fight an elite, which is going to be tougher than your normal ship you'd expect. But, you know, every jump is more points. Every kill is more points. So That's true. And, uh, you know, he... We, we are allowing, I, I believe it's three dives we're allowing per sector. So if he can eke out every little bit of jump for every little bit of score, you're sacrificing time. But if uh, you, if the score adds up, that might be the difference maker. Right. That's going to be sort of the interesting meta uh, now of players is like, well, am I going to take these extra jumps? Uh, surrender offers are like another thing that are going to kind of be considered because, well, the fight's mm -hmm. over. But if you don't kill a ship, then you're losing on points. Um, That's so for those who point. don't know uh, how score is calculated in FTL, it is like the number of ships defeated times 20 plus the number of beacons explored times 10 plus the total number of scrap collected. That doesn't include uh, scrap from items that you sell or bonus mm -hmm. scrap from scrap recovery arm. And then all that is multiplied by 1, 1.25 or 1.5, depending on difficulty. So this will be mm -hmm. 1.5 because it's hard mode. Mm hmm. Wow. Well, this is a pretty tough little dive ship that Retreat Retreat has here. That's a two shield ship that is, uh, well, burst laser one, heavy laser one, and a bomb. But that bomb is coming in clutch to help get those weapons offline for him. Yeah, that is. That's very very spooky. <laughs> he's 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 might be paying the price for taking this dive because he's a good half sector behind right now, uh, having to deal with this dive ship. Uh, yeah, Freddy and. Z. Sorry, yeah, Freddy. Yo, no, Freddy went to a store and found a burst laser one. It's a really solid weapon. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, honestly, like I said, he's could now be in the position where if he just finds hacking, his offense is essentially just good to go. Yeah, yeah. Burst laser one for a long time. I really hated it because compared to burst laser two, it's just so weak. However, uh, early game, it's a fairly cheap weapon and it's pretty easy to get online that works well with other weapons. So it can be a nice holdover or if you find nothing else, uh, a weapon that can fill a slot for you for a while. Yeah, Retreat is also going abandoned. So the other option was Mantis. Uh, oh, Mantis okay. sectors, they're a little bit inconsistent in terms of mm -hmm. uh, money. Plus, um, it's actually going to be probably a little bit slow because uh, those borders... So in FTL, like when you win a fight, unless you're in a hazard event or you have borders on your ship, your FTL recharges and you can just jump away instantly. So if you're mm -hmm. constantly having to deal with borders and kill them off, you're going to be way slower. And again, mm -hmm. uh, it generally doesn't have as much scrap to say like an abandoned sector can net you well i like what freddy's doing right now he's saving up his scrap Ooh, that was a nice extra reward. i think it was a free beam drone he got he's saving up his scrap i'm guessing he's looking for shields or hacking that would be my two my two go-to things i'm looking for store right now because he's going into sector three with no shields pretty good weapons though Do yeah ever... i mean sorry go ahead no, 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 go ahead. Finish your thought. Well, I was I was going to ask, do you ever upgrade cloaking early on this ship at all? Um, I actually used to upgrade cloaking instead of weapons. That was like my go-to thing because of like asteroid fields or uh, drones. Um, just found weapons tend to be like more efficient and something mm -hmm. I normally upgraded into. But for like Freddy's case, I mean, if you have a, you only need 125 scrap to buy shields and then another right. 50 to go up to second shield. So that's 175. Mm -hmm. It's and he already has the drone to sell. So I feel like it would be really safe to just go ahead and give yourself a buffer point in shields um, in case it just randomly gets hit mm -hmm. or you just need that extra cloak time. Well, Freddy just went to an NG sector and I love. Oh, and there's his shields. 
NG sector is kind of perfect right now. With that much scrap, you just need a store to get your systems online. Uh, I will say that often NG sectors are less scrap gains. Is that is that what you found with uh, with your runs? Um, I mean, again, if you're just judging it from like scrap gain from fights, then yeah, because there's just so few fights in NG yeah. sectors. Um, you tend to get more free stuff, particularly if you have an NG. They have like six, seven blue options in the mm -hmm. sector, which are really nice. Um, but yeah, uh, NG sectors are generally pretty favored. Almost any sector that's going to have guaranteed two stores plus not a lot of fights. Just so mm -hmm. you can like kind of coast through, take a break, all really good. Well, I, I will say it's, what's interesting, what I, what I love about this tournament format, apart from just getting to see different people using different strategies, is to see things like, do you choose an NG sector that's going to have less ship fights for safer scrap gains? that might be faster or do you take uh, more abandoned sectors or um what other sectors do you, do you find lucrative like rebel sectors are those good for scrap uh games rebel fights? sectors are pretty good for scrap civilian sectors are really good for scrap um okay. they have the nebula jumps and since they're not a nebula sector that means uh, that they have the fleet pursuit uh they can have point. up to 11 nebula beacons oh, wow. so I didn't know that. yeah so i've had like you know 17 18 19 jumps in like a civilian sector and mm -hmm. versus you're probably getting around 11 12 maybe even 13 towards the higher end depending on where the exit location is mm -hmm. well freddie just got two really nice jumps he got a free combat drone and then i believe he got the uh take the weapon quests right there so he got a couple nice little extra boost there retreat is uh still i think kind of half halfway through abandoned sector so he's going slower going for more ship fights going for more diving whereas freddy is keeping it fast and i feel like speed wise that's going to give him a, a, a kind of a leg up in, in this head to head yeah and uh if anybody knows about score it's going to be retreat retreat so if you're not familiar <laughs> with retreat uh, uh -huh. retreat has 8k scores across every single ship and a 9k <laughs> score uh, okay. on the uh, crystal b that's without uh farming elite ships really yeah uh also and it, it's fine uh took my uh best of my world record in golf mode oh which is getting the lowest score while winning is that what golf score is yeah so golf score i was originally sort of something i had talked with like scott Lindsay wilson about but i was like mm -hmm. yeah let's see how like how can you beat hard mode with like the lowest score possible uh -huh. um and i held the world record for a while with a 2202 Whew, that is a low score <laughs> um yeah so i think freddie has something like a 1935 so yeah, so they beat FTL hard mode with a final score of 1935. Uh, was it Freddy or Retreat that you said? Oh, I'm sorry, Retreat. Thank you. Retreat. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that is that is impressive. That is a skill I have not learned because I'm like, why would I want to gimp myself? Because it's a challenge, and <laughs> that sounds sure. like a big challenge to do. Yeah. Ooh, phrasing a pulsar. Ooh, okay, pulsar against a flak. That's pretty scary. Do you like to wait for the first pulsar shot before doing your first volley? Um, so let's see, Pulsar's fire, I think somewhere in between like the 11 to 18 second range is when the first okay. one comes off. It, de it depends on so much. Um, okay. so for those who don't know how Pulsar's work, uh, if you have any power in your shields, like even a lone Zoltan, your shields get hit and then another random system. If you have no mm -hmm. power in your shields, then it's two random systems, which might include your shields. Mm -hmm. Now, the extra fun fact is you can mitigate the ion damage because the ion damage is based in how much power you actually have in that system. So okay. if you like toggle your stuff off really quickly... Um, the most you're going to take is like one ion damage in that system. And you can okay. use like that information to figure out the best way to actually deal with a pulsar. Um, okay. The official formula is the amount of power in the system plus two, divide that sum by two, round it down. And that's how much ion damage you're going to take. Okay. Wow. I need to start asking you the details of FTL. Cause I'm like, <laughs> uh, ion pulsar. I, I hate this thing. I'm going to leave my weapons and shields up and hope I'm lucky, but it sounds like you got the formulas for a lot of these random. Oh uh, yeah. That was uh that was a Mike Copley special. It was just like, Oh, like this is how it works. And you're like, Oh, it took, take a little while to like, you know, it, take in all that like extra knowledge. Yeah. But uh, after you like incorporate it, I find pulsars are a lot less scary. Okay. Well, pulsars, I've, I've said this a lot on my stream, pulsars are to me the worst of the hazard events. Um, so having having kind of a plan to deal with them is a good idea. I often will wait, if my weapons aren't ridiculously strong and fast, I will often wait to use the shields going down of my enemy from the pulsar to 
augment my first shot is what I will yeah. often do. Yeah. If you have hacking, I mean, you're going to hack weapons. Like, that's just mm -hmm. generally, like, this the safest strat, if possible. All right. Well, Freddy Z is continuing to... Oh, wow. Is that a... That's a three-shield ship. I believe he's still in Sector 3, and that's pretty pretty strong yeah he, he just circled the three three shields yeah uh, the pirate uh the light cruiser ship is one of those cheater ships that can have like an extra shield bubble like mm -hmm. normally in sector two is almost exactly like sector one in terms of ship difficulty but the mm -hmm. uh light cruiser will like to show up every once in a while with an extra shield bubble just to you know ftl you <laughs> just just to assert ftl's dominance over the player occasionally yeah doesn't want he is handling it well he is handling it well he's only got Three shots to get through, so he's got a shot in on the shields. No hacking yet. Um, but he's. Uh, I'm. I'm going to guess that 120 scrap is saving for either weapon upgrade or hacking. Would be my guess. Yeah, I mean hacking would be the pretty big fine. Um, and if it for some reason the store just doesn't have that, maybe just like pick up battery mind control. Normally with this ship, like you go into shields, it's pretty standard, and then you mm -hmm. want hacking because again that you always want hacking. You, um, yeah. And then it's like for that last system, normally you go mind control just to cancel out the mind control in phase three. Uh -huh. um, but the ship actually starts with level two sensors, which surprisingly has uh, a lot of blue options. You may not mm -hmm. uh, like you may not consider it, but actually most sectors will give you like th anywhere from like three to five blue options if you just have okay. level two sensors. And again, really? that'll let you get a line of sight on a uh, fight. So you can use mind control to try and lower enemy evasion. That is very good point. And Freddy has another three shield ship. That's two pirate light cruisers, I think, in a row. That's some pretty bad luck right there. <laughs> or or good luck. I mean that that that's really <laughs> rare. So you know. <laughs> really good luck. Good yeah. luck to die. But he is hitting a shot, so he's able to get through. Um he chose to get the burst laser offline rather than the shields. Um you mentioned uh level two sensors having a lot of blue options. I often when I start with long range scanners, of course this ship you don't have that option. A lot of those overlap, don't they? Don't a lot of the blue options yes. overlap? Yes. Uh, yeah. Scanners? There is a lot of overlap between long range scanners and level two sensors. So you can just you can just sell long range scanners. You know, just, <laughs> oh, just jettison them. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm sort of known for uh, somewhat frequently, definitely more so than most players, uh, selling long range scanners if it gets really? like a weapon or a system online. Okay. Uh, I as much as I so long range scanners like gives you sort of this like small mapping so you can find the fights mm -hmm. that you want to find so that you keep getting score and also avoid like hazard events or bad beacons whatnot um but i'm i'm a proponent of the idea of like if it gets me a weapon online if it gets me a system online like those mm -hmm. are gonna actually win me fights and that's uh that's what i'm after wow these are some two pretty rough fights freddy he's dealing with this three shield ship with cloaking by the way but retreat retreat still doesn't have shields and he's got a beam drone shooting at him these are both some pretty rough situations right now <sighs> Yeah, so like early going, uh, the double heavy laser one, like offensive, you can actually run into that ship in like sector one in like an asteroid field. It's, uh -huh. It can be really disgusting. Okay, well, uh, it looks like Freddy Z did pick up mind control. I missed that. He must hit a store while we were talking there. So it looks like he did go with the mind control. I'm going to guess that means hacking was not available. Uh, they're both in, are they both in Zoltan? I know. Uh, yeah, it looks like Retreat's Zoltan. in Zoltan. I think Freddy was in a Sector 4 rock sector. Okay. So right. Zoltan sector is very spooky because Zoltan shields are, they're rough. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of FTL fights, it's really, it's like that first volley is so important. If you can just take out their weapons before they have a chance to fire. Mm -hmm. Or even if they do fire like one time because the AI Fortunately, isn't very smart. They don't do a lot of targeting stuff. Thank um, goodness. Yeah, yeah, they're not they're not trying to time their volleys well. Um, you can just like crush their weapons, and then you're just mitigating damage, mm -hmm. and then that tends to make the fight a whole lot easier. I'm quite surprised Retreat doesn't have shields yet. I don't know if he hasn't had the option or if he's purposefully. Maybe he just hasn't found the store with it yet, which sometimes is the luck you get with our FTL. You just don't get the store that has the system you need. Yeah, uh, it could be, but again, as we, like I said, if there was system in stores and it looked like Freddy picked up a shield there, uh, Retreat might be going really all out for score and just passing okay. up stores because they're not fights. That's true. That's true. I guess you you say he is known for score farming, so maybe he is confident to be shieldless. He did go level two cloaking, which is a good you know, option to take. You have that longer time between volleys when you take that extra cloaking time. 
Yeah, and he's up, but he went to Zoltan. Again, Zoltan sectors uh, can be pretty decent money-wise. Uh, they mm -hmm. have the nebulas, not as much as like a civilian sector, but you can still get, uh, I think, like six or seven nebula jumps in a yeah. Zoltan sector. Mm -hmm. It's just that you have those those two events outside of the Zoltan Shields, which is the Zoltan Border Police, which is awful. Oof. It's uh -huh. awful. You can have upwards of four Zoltans. They don't even care what sector it's in. I've actually had four Zoltan Border Police with mind control in Sector 2. Really? Uh, yeah. And an Artemis. That that did not go well. That is That sounds like a bad time. And yeah. Retreat Retreat's got... Okay, he did a really nice play there. He did his level 2 cloaking with this beam drone looking right at him. And uh, he, he did time his weapons to get weapons and drone control offline, which is really smart play there. Nice. That's, that's that's brave to not have shields, but he has the skills to back it up. So that's yeah. Kind of awesome. So what you can do, and particularly early on with the the cell C, is if drones are like super scary, but you can kind of see them line up and then try and judge, make sure like, oh, uh, that's probably hitting an empty room or it's not mm -hmm. hitting a vital system. Ooh, free and I infrared. fear the that's I pretty. fear the weapons more so. Mm -hmm. uh, but hey, yeah, we got to a store. Looks like we bought our okay. shields. Okay, so retreat got shields and backup battery. I like that pickup. And that is... hacking. Oh, and he got the hacking. Okay, that can make up some time with him being behind Freddy. Yeah, ideally, retreat probably doesn't have to go to a store anymore. Um, okay. I mean, yeah, you'd like to have mind control as a cancel, but, you know, if you're just going to play really fast and not try to uh, min max to such a degree, uh -huh. um, like I said, he has the weapons that can win. Uh, he has the hacking. He has all the systems. He has mm -hmm. the four crew. So, yeah, could very easily have the option, which, again, I wouldn't be too surprised if Richie did so. Just ignore stores and mm -hmm. go uh, for as much score as possible. And he is definitely going for the score because I'm pretty sure he just committed to another dive in this sector. So Freddy feels like he's going for time while Retreat's going for score. So we're going to see how these two strategies kind of stack up. Because Freddy's a whole sector ahead of Retreat right now. He is going into Sector 5. Retreat's about to go into Sector 4. Yeah, but with hacking, like those, That's some true. of those fights that were nasty are going to be so much faster. I mean, you can just hack down shields, which mm -hmm. is uh, going to be the general play. Uh, you're going to mini beam through whatever is annoying. So mm -hmm. what's great is like you can just like mini beam through their piloting or use any beam weapon, and then that's going to mm -hmm. reduce their uh, evasion, and then you just fire all your weapons into their weapons, and the fight's over. And looks like Freddy had a choice between, I believe it was Zoltan and Mantis chose Mantis. I'm going to guess because he had mind control, he's a little more well-equipped to deal with Mantis borders and, uh, you know, the the, the scary, uh, what what is what is the text? Uh, the red, the, the red, all of a sudden everything turns red or whatever it is when the Mantis are, are aboard your ship. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Warning intruders on board. Yeah, you, you, have, a, you have a couple uninvited guests. Um... Yeah, it's, it's not a lot of fun being boarded by five Mantis. That's true. Um, well, which do you find scary? Zoltan Border Police or the Mantis boarding event? Um, I guess it, it, it generally, it like everything in FTL. So it depends. You, it depends, right, right. Like <laughs> yeah. anytime it's like, well, what do you do here? And you're like, well, it depends. And then you just talk for like half an hour, depending on what's like all the things that have happened uh -huh. and like what kind of decision somebody should actually have to make. Um, I guess, well, the nice thing is if you do have hacking uh, and you get boarded by like five mantis, just hack their teleporter and send them all the way back. Mm -hmm. The only issue with that is, uh, yeah, here's the dive ship with a uh, flak uh -huh. burst two. That's and a either an Artemis or a Leto there. Definitely scary ship. I, I, I'm, I actually want to ask you this question because I've been noticing Retreat Retreat. He has this extra NG just hanging out in weapons and not hanging out in shields. So, I, not shields, uh, shields or doors. I would think with borders, a lot of people like to have an early person on, on doors to help deal with borders. Right, yeah. Normally you go, you know, like piloting engines, third crew on weapons. There's a couple mm -hmm. exceptions. Slug A, you generally actually want to keep your slug on weapons to help that charge time. And okay. engines isn't too far away if you got to run from it. And then, yeah, you want to put that other crew member on the door system, again, to give you that man bonus elevated doors to help deal with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it's this is just uh, either didn't put the crew there or, yeah, just like wants to make sure that their weapons are fully efficient at all times. Yeah. This is a tough boarding event Freddy's he's got right now. That's boarding with Clombe. I believe he had free borders, so 
That was a smart pickup to have Columbia in mind control because he would be really, really hurting if he didn't have those systems to to kind of help this anti boarding right now. Yeah, so Columbia is an interesting option. So it's not it's not a typical pickup. You almost most of the time I don't ever switch. Like the only exception is like boarding ships. You may feel a little bit better about. Um, like having a drunk or a, sorry, a clone bay to deal uh -huh. with, uh, like just so you can just essentially create a meat grinder, keep sending your crew in to die. Um, but normally you wouldn't switch on to it like a non boarding ship, but uh, clone bay does have a tendency to give you like some blue options. You can kind of mm -hmm. just risk your crew. I mean, yeah. again, as an FTL player, our crew is very precious to us uh -huh. and we would never just like fling them out of an airlock or something like uh -huh. horrible. <laughs> um, like a horrible human who's used. Right, to right. Thing. I mean, no, we <laughs> obviously like you could do that, but I'm, I'm just saying as a possibility uh, that you have that option now and you can get make maybe some more scrap from uh, events by doing so. I feel like Freddy is feeling is playing really sketchy right now. I think he just has not taken the time to recover from these couple of boarding uh, Manta ships because I think he went from one boarding ship to another and his O2 has been offline this entire time. So <laughs> uh, Retreat is looking at those pirate light cruisers that I think we saw in the previous sector. Those three shield ships with cloaking. Yeah, those, yeah. That... Those are not my favorite. <laughs> no, like anytime you like... Like these are kind of like cheater ships. Uh, the NG uh, virus event, like if you get that in sector mm -hmm. two, it can also be two shielded ships. Um, those are like the kind of, you're, you just kind of roll your eyes and like, all right, like I guess we're just doing this. It's like also if you run into something with like a uh, shield charger. Okay, oh. Freddy lost his clone bay, but I, he must have backup DNA bank because his crew is not dying. So wow. he is being, I don't know if he has that for free or if he bought that, but holy crap is i'm sure he's happy that he has that right now <laughs> yeah so if uh if you're if you've ever got uh if you switched over from an easy and normal mode um to like hard mode you you might get this idea aside from just all the enemy ships being hard like oh they just keep hitting me in the systems uh -huh. and you think like oh it's just in your head no it's not uh, in hard mode, there is actually a formula that the AI does to more specifically target systems. Uh, mm -hmm. It's looking for certain information to be more likely to put it on there. So mm -hmm. like if your shields are charged, if your weapons are charging, those are on the target list, more likely to be hit. If you have below 50% oxygen, oxygen mm -hmm. goes on the list, which is a strategy you'll see some people use on ships because they mm -hmm. don't want to get hit in their weapons. So they just right. drop the O2 below 50%. Um, and if you have people cloning, then Clone Bay also gets to go on that list. And uh, Freddy got to feel that firsthand. He's a little low on health, but he has he has recovered from those couple of boarding ships. Uh, that Mind Control and Clone Bay have kind of saved him from these couple of boarding ships. Retreat Retreat is uh, weapon-wise, how do, how do we compare these? Do you like... Wow, they're actually the same weapons, aren't they? Yeah, First, they have the exact one, same laser weapons. Minibeam. Okay. So I guess I'd put retreat, retreat ahead in offense because of that hacking system then. Yeah. Um, so I was already got hacking up to level two. Uh, hacking mm -hmm. level one will always take down one shield. It's a 50, 50% if it cracks two. It has something to okay. do with like like the frame you activate it. It's like an in-game monitor. Uh, mm -hmm. No one yet has known how to do that consistently. Um, but that level two hacking will get you through three shields and level three hacking will get you through level five shields. Mm-hmm. Uh, Freddy just passed on a heavy laser one, which I'm very surprised because I'm pretty sure he loves that. I think he wanted hacking though, and there was no hacking in that store. So, uh oh, he's renaming. What did he rename that mantis? <laughs> uh, I can't see something with an E. I'm going to guess that's a meme for a <laughs> stream. You got to appreciate the memes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got time. You got time. Um, yeah, so uh, Heavy Laser is really, it's a solid weapon. Uh, one power, two damage. Uh, mm -hmm. But it also has like a 30% chance to cause a fire, 30% chance to cause a breach, and a 20% chance to stun. So mm -hmm. like you're normally going to get a secondary effect out of it. Very easy to like, you know, hack shields, dump a Heavy Laser shot into it, mm -hmm. and cause a fire. And then the tr their crew just tend to die off trying to put it out. All right. Well, retreat, retreat. This is this is very interesting. We're seeing a really cool kind of difference in strategy here. Retreat, retreat is kind of min-maxing his scrap gains. It seems like going much slower, whereas Freddy is playing faster. But uh, he's he's again, I think at least a good sector ahead right now. He got picked up a couple crew there. I think he got a human and a mantis. So he's really wanting to deal with borders and uh, planning for I think boss phase three kind of thing with with that defense there. 
Yeah, so normally um, when speed isn't an option, if you choose not to have speed an option, um, you can do a lot of, there's like a lot of really slow strats uh, that you can do that can be helpful, particularly like crew kills. Um, but those things generally, yeah, they do take a lot of time. And as we talked about, crew kills do normally kind of pan out and you getting uh, like more value out of it. Uh, it's a it's not guaranteed and b like if you do get like a free item or a free crew member or something then you actually probably just hurt your score because you just got mm -hmm. less crap out of it true very true okay sorry i'm working with something on commands here while uh all right Ooh. Doing that? is that a force abandoned sector six? Oh. oh that's fun <laughs> fun exactly the word i would think of for yeah that was the look on six. freddy's face freddy's face was like we're about to have a lot of fun that's what the <laughs> f and ftl stands for f is for fun mm -hmm. not for f respects and dying i guess right right <laughs> right so uh there's a couple things he could maybe choose to do i know he's still kind of trying to hold out for uh hacking but you can uh you could try to upgrade your oxygen. Um, unfortunately, like sector one or sector four, when you first see the bomber ships, you're only going to be dealing with like one border, which is essentially Lanius is a walking breach. So mm -hmm. if you have a level two oxygen, open up the doors, then the O2 isn't a problem. Um, but yeah, they're going to be boarding with two crew. So it's not going to be as effective in uh, trying to undo the. Uh, the loss of O2 from those particular fights. But hey, sometimes you don't even run into Lanny Bombers. So, you know. Yeah, we can hope for that. But I, I anytime I go into abandoned sector six or seven, I'm I'm counting on at least one or two and raging at FTL because that's Oh, he found of... hacking. Oh, he got the hacking. That is huge. Uh no good weapons though, I would say. But hacking can definitely make up for no good weapons. Yeah, not, not anything that uh, works with uh, the kind of the speed loadout that he's going for. And there it is. Yep, there's a bomber. We got the uh, we got the cloaking. We got the teleporter. No mind control, though. So, you know, it could actually have been worse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, retreat, retreat. Uh, he's only got four crew. No, four crew and no mind control. I'm honestly a little scared for phase three of the boss if he's uh, he doesn't get like a bunch of crew kills phase, phase one or two. Yeah, so like the old school strategy that kind of stuck around for a long time was just the, uh, it's known as the kidnap strats or whatever, where you mm -hmm. want to fight phase two on the base, and then you jump away, follow the flagship for phase three, and then what you do is like, how if the fight goes bad, there's just too many borders, you can hop back to the base, mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about an ASB or or the flagship, you, get all, you just get all that time to, you know, kill all the borders, do any necessary repairs, and then you get to re-engage the flagship and those crew kills hold over. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, uh, once you, uh, I don't know, I guess get more used to FTL and you get like more strategies, trying to get crew kills in phase one mm -hmm. um, is really beneficial because then like, yeah, you also don't have to deal with the borders. A lot of that has to often do with like shield hacks, putting mm -hmm. fires in the shield rooms. Mind control can help assist that as well. Mm -hmm. um, if you have like a lot of projectiles, uh, you could even do like an O2 hack. I know Britnoth uh, is an Opos. Uh, player and is a mm -hmm. real big fan of doing the O2 hack uh, phase one. It only has like level two oxygen. Uh, the flagship fight does. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we that's actually like got to go. see that in one of our test test runs. Farb, which was it blew my mind because I hadn't seen this strategy. Farb mm -hmm. used Britnot's strategy of hacking O2. It was on Lanius B, so he boarded with two Lanius in the engines, took out engines really quick with mind control, and then he just could take out crew on that phase one. That was it was a mind blowing strategy. I thought that was oh, so yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. It's always fun like when, you know, again, you know, I have 3,000 hours. A lot of players have two, 3,000 mm -hmm. hours. And yet you can still see something like, oh, like that's really cool. And I can't mm -hmm. wait to like incorporate that kind of uh, mm -hmm. strategy and, you know, my runs. I had to do that the next run. I just had to do it. Uh, <laughs> Freddy is seeing his second Lanius bomber of the uh, uh, of the Lanius sector. So um, he's actually using Mike. Is he using Mike? Okay, he used it to counter. And he's dealing with uh, these lanes with the double mantis. So he's got that double lane, uh, double mantis to deal with borders, which is really helping him here. Yeah. So fortunately, I, I do believe that the mini beam can reach from piloting to the weapon. So if you can hack down shields, get the beam through, maybe use that to lower evasion. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just use mind control to try and keep those uh, those landy borders in check. Mm hmm. Well, um, I I'm curious. I, I I've been asking a lot of players if they prefer 
no pausing completely or kind of strategic pausing during these uh during these this this tournament runs how have you been practicing have you been practicing complete no pause or kind of doing a mix oh i am a so i'm a pause player through and okay. through uh okay. i don't do no i, I don't do no pause um <laughs> filthy posy pause casual um so <laughs> oh Freddy just turned down a surrender offer of a free weapon. Oh, okay. Um, so again, that would probably be a score thing because the weapon won't count. And also that mm -hmm. means it's a ship not defeated. Uh -huh. So it's actually gonna be more points if he kills it. Plus you don't you don't need the missile anyways. His weapon. Yeah. Are... And it looks like he's committing to another dive here. So he's now that he's I feel like now that he's stronger, he's feeling like he can commit to more of these dives, more of these not taking free stuff to to kind of get that score farming. Yeah, hacking does help with that. So uh, back to the uh, question on like playing stuff. Oh, automated reloader though. Yeah, for yeah, free. Yeah, Gotta maybe love it. for free plus faster mm -hmm. fights. Also good. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so for me, it was like trying to be better about hotkeys. Uh, uh -huh. I, I, I generally take somewhere to like three hours on a run because um, oh, I wow. am pretty meticulous in how I try to play. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll often have like I'll be like four or five reactor below like running things uh, mm -hmm. and just use pausing as much as possible to try and make up for that. Uh, a lot of micro pausing kind of got into that. Uh, for those who don't know, you actually have two pause buttons in FTL. It's the space bar as well as the middle mouse button. So yeah, if you can I've like, recently. yeah, if you alternate between the two, you can get just like these, like a few frames in between pauses. And so you can do things like depower weapons really quickly put that power into engines get the dodge that you need go right back into weapons you'll lose you know a few frames of charge time mm -hmm. um so that's like a really strong play um so i can't really speak to how no pause players are going to be playing in the tournament i have a feeling mm -hmm. most of them are not going to actually bother using pause at all um yeah. I would expect Farb too, because he's Farb. Um, <laughs> Farb will use the advantages and has done some. He's like mixed a little bit, but again, mostly known for being a, a no pause player. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of it's going to kind of come down to like muscle memory and rhythm. Uh -huh. um, like I said, I, I had spoke to Farb about it a little bit that once he got back to no pause, uh, it was so much harder for him to do like the hacking exploit to get past uh -huh. drone control. Yeah, um, because you just have that innate timing, and then you throw in a couple yeah. pause, and it just gets completely thrown off. Yeah, he has that muscle memory that he's kind of lost from playing a different style. I will say, right. Freddie just had one of those ninety percent wall cloaking missile hits in the shields. You know, it's just one of, one of your favorite FTL, just FTL things. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, FTL, um, you're you're gonna be doing about 100 jumps in FTL. So it's actually incredibly likely those like 1% events are just gonna happen. Um, I'm not gonna pretend like I've never been frustrated by those things occurring. Um, I had a I had a stealth B run a little while ago. I think I got hit, I got hit through 80% cloak five times in a row in sector one. Oh, 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 and I was just oh, like, God. uh, okay. Were you able to keep your mental strength through something like that happening? Or did you uh, rage? Because that's what I do. I just rage and get salty. Right. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> so mental strength is like actually a thing. Um, I used to uh -huh. be a little bit bad about it. Not not like raging or anything, but I could get frustrated. And I would just mm -hmm. like let that frustration kind of build up. And then you become clouded by, you know, thoughts of the dark side. Um, <laughs> let the force and, flow through you. Yeah, yeah. Let that hate go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, and kind of just sort of like talking with other players. Uh, Thomas Peterson was kind of like uh, a person I, I spoke with because I, I like I lost like four runs in a row and I was like, ah, oh, there was like nothing I could do. It was just bad RNG <laughs> uh -huh. and looks at a run. It was just like, yeah, you could have just jumped away. You would have lived. Yeah. And I was like, mm -hmm. right, right. You just jump away. <laughs> That's like a thing you can do instead of just taking 14 whole damage and dying for no reason. Yeah, I, yeah. I know. I know that feel. I know that feel yeah. so well. Sometimes when I'm playing Britnoff, I'm sure, as you know, and many FTL players know, in streams will be like, well, you could have just done this. I'm like, why couldn't I think of that in the middle of my rage and yelling at FTL? I should have just jumped away. That's, I think, a skill that a lot of times, I know I personally forget about. It's like, I need every little bit of scrap. I can't run if there's even a tiny chance I can get scrap here. When if I just run, I would have saved so much whole damage. That's that equivalent to saving scrap, you know? Yeah, so I would say... Like during 2019, uh, there was like, uh, everybody was kind of trying to go for the cycle. There was like all those no pause players, uh, your Dolphin Chemist, Scott Wednesday, Wilson, Farb mm -hmm. and Jorbs, like all of them were getting like streaks in the twenties mm -hmm. and trying to be the first person to do um, 
the cycle clear. And back then, um, I think like only five people had had actually completed the cycle. Back in mm -hmm. 2019, the game came out in you know 2012. Uh -huh. Now there are 16 players with cycles, and three of them have multiple cycle clears. Uh huh. Um, I mean, Hollow has like four. I think Life's Burrito has four. Billy Kirby has done two cycle plus mm -hmm. clears. So there was this time where like it was all about score crew killing became like the thing and trying to just get as much points as possible because if you have all the scrap then you should you're more likely to win uh -huh. um but then there sort of became this like better mindset um hollow's really good about it like just running for fights being just uh -huh. like you know maybe i don't need this maybe i just don't die here mm -hmm. and better fight assessment of getting back into the mindset of just trying to survive versus just mm -hmm. trying to kill every ship yeah well, that sounds like similar uh, kind of something you may have learned while doing your golf scores is knowing you don't have to take every fight. If you manage your scrap right, you can you can uh, work with lower scrap, I guess, right? Yeah, right. That that definitely changed perspective, uh, uh, though mostly I just tied it to the fact that, yeah, you can kind of get away with it on the Crystal B. It's like, yeah, Crystal uh, B doesn't need anything to win. Um, <laughs> and I still stand by that. Crystal B, like three crew, way to get through Zalt and Shields, you're pretty much done. Really, um, even without a weapon, you would say? Um, yeah, like once you get through Zalt and Shields, if you like swap to a clone bay or something like that, um, but it it just doesn't take much. Uh, you have mm -hmm. a really long boss fight, but yeah, you know, <laughs> it's great because you saved a lot of time getting there in the first place. Okay, okay. Um, all right, Freddy Z, he is uh dealing with one of my least favorite ships, giant cloaked uh rock ships with giant missiles but he has his cloaking he has his uh his hacking so he's got good defense um, yeah yeah ships gi giant missiles behind cloaking or zoltan shields are mm -hmm. the just the bane of like the ftl player or it's just mm -hmm. like can I, can I just have a chance to interact with it that's all <laughs> i want i just want a chance to like engage the game on some level uh-huh all right, took out the cloaking, took out the shield. He's looking good. I still think he's at least a sector, maybe about a sector and a half behind. When I last saw Retreat Sector, it looked like he's only in Sector 5, I think. Let me let me take a look here, because I'm I'm really curious time-wise. Freddy's he's halfway through Sector 7, so he is he is trucking along uh, time-wise. Pick up a backup battery. It looks really good. That's his last system he needs. Yeah, like Retreat here is uh, going for a crew kill. Mm-hmm. Going for a crew kill, letting the fire. Wow, this is so. This is so interesting to see a players going completely different strategies. One for speed, one for absolute min maxing stra uh, scrap gains. It looks like. Yeah, I, 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 I really like it. Um, even if it may not like work out with the meta, like oh, you're just spending so much time getting for this crew kill, and it's not mm -hmm. like the chances that you're going to get like a reward that makes up for the time loss uh -huh. is not worth it. But like, just like. If you play the way that you're used to playing, then you didn't do anything wrong. Like if mm -hmm. you're, this is the comfortable way, win or lose in the tournament, you know, mm -hmm. do what you know. Yeah, and retreat, retreat. Yeah, he's coming up on sector six, so he's a good, was it sector and a half behind? So uh, we'll see if his higher score, because I'm gonna assume with how much extra scrap and ship spice he's getting, his score should be higher. But it just we'll have to see if the time difference is gonna be too much to overcome for him. So Freddy is looking towards that sector eight here. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, it's, it's also interesting that we have this five minute delay. So keeping track of chat, oh, right. we, get, we get to see, oh, wow, there's an automated reloader that we saw five minutes ago. So <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Um, yeah, so we're, uh, let's see. So Freddy has a, a rock sector, rock sector, generally a little bit frowned upon mostly because of the rock mine event, uh, that can uh, just 25% yeah. chance just kills off a crew member unless you have a missile mm -hmm. or level five engines and that sector can show up as early as sector two. So it's just mm -hmm. like, Oh, well, I had a boarding ship or I was <laughs> running the NGB and now I'm not. And, uh, Freddy, I, I have a feeling that those type of events are exactly why he spent that 50 scrap on clone bay because that's insurance i hear i hear that hollow especially for boarding ships but even for a lot of other ships just for consistency clone bay is is a pretty uh high priority to get fairly on early in the run are you of that same mind or no no like i said uh i i generally won't ever switch on anything like uh, you never oh. switch off of clone bay there's almost mm -hmm. like, like you wouldn't 
there, as I said, it's generally just considered to be better. Uh, and like, it's just so much, it's 50 scrap to just kind of shift over to a different system. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you could probably just upgrade if you were so inclined, just upgrade med bay to like level two, and then you'll get into some blue options and say 15 mm -hmm. scrap. Um, but chasing blue options in FTL, while you might do it in this tournament, you might take a couple risks again, it's going to potentially just generate some more money. Like mm -hmm. chasing blue options is, I find pretty dubious. Okay. Um, a really good way to kind of showcase that is there's an achievement on the Federation ships to get like five blue options by sector five. Yes. Uh -huh. And it's really hard to do. It is. You're it's, like, but I have a completely rock. RNG dependent. Yeah. I have a rock. I got an NG. I got a beam weapon. Like I have all the blue options. And yet uh -huh. it's actually really hard to get those blue options to generate consistently. So. Like, I'll just put money in stuff in my ship that I need, shields, evasions, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Well, Freddy's looking at his last door, Sector 7, look at his weapons. His choices were Burst Laser 1 and a Flak 2, and I think an Ion or something. He's just shaking his head, because he doesn't want any of that. <laughs> I mean, Flak 2 could be pretty fun. It's slow. Yeah. It's, it's slow. slow. He's got an automated reloader, but I guess yeah. he just feels like it's too slow, I guess. No, no, that, it's that, worth. that totally makes sense. I mean, you're, you're again, the, you're these quick alpha strikes kind of uh, mentality. Um, I mean, I, I, I ran three uh, Flak 2s and a Halberd Beam once. That was a lot of fun. Uh, using the uh, Sven Maneuver? Yeah, yeah. The Reigniter? I mean, you got to. Like, <laughs> like, it's just like, ah, I, get, I got 21 projectiles and a Halberd Beam and a 12-powered weapon system. <laughs> yeah. Who needs hacking yeah, anymore, right? No, nope, not me. It? <laughs> so uh That's for those great. who don't know uh you can like depower a weapon before you jump like it's way easier with pause i don't even know if no pause players can really do this uh you can depower one weapon and power another weapon and when you jump to the next weekend that that weapon that you depowered just loses a little bit of charge so this is really great with flax because they just fire all their shots at once mm -hmm. and so it's just instantaneously that you can just swap over to like a different weapon um it's also a really useful strategy for charged weapons so charged weapons if you just use a pre-igniter as is fully charged jump to the next beacon it only keeps it re only retains one of those charges mm -hmm. but if you let it charge at full depowered a little bit gets to the next jump then that's where it's at and you actually get to have all those charges at the start of the fight yeah that's an interesting strategy i haven't used much because it always felt really scammy to me but i feel like for especially charged weapons you get to really see the power of what the Sven maneuver can do yeah, well, I mean, charge weapons are already kind of like slower, so they always yeah. feel like they're penalized and like the fact that they don't quite work with it. But that it's up to everybody. Um, you know, there's uh, lots of what is, what isn't going to be allowed. Uh, we mm -hmm. even had that discussion with this tournament. Uh, yeah. Things like, you know, the hack bypass, which is pretty much the most infamous, the most famous one that everybody knows, mm -hmm. where you can toggle off your hacking drone to evade the shots of uh, defense drones trying to shoot them down. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe we uh, decided to allow the spend, spend maneuver because of how much time it takes to do it, if I remember correctly. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know I, if anybody will take the time to do it, but. <laughs> yeah, I get there, there. There is time management. It's really rare. Um, like, it, I mean, you're going to spend 120 scrap for, mm -hmm. for and then get a super overpowered weapon so you can really get the full exploit of it. Uh -huh. I mean, maybe. So it's a big um, so investment like, to make it happen, for sure. Yeah, and and that's like everything in FTL, where it's very easy to come up with a reason to do something. It's better mm -hmm. to come up with a reason like not to do something. <laughs> and you have to kind of like balance those two things. Like you don't uh -huh. want to be so like ah, oh, like I can see like forty different things that could go wrong with this. It's like no, no, uh -huh. don't, just by hacking. It's okay. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Yeah, just by hacking. Uh, like uh, Pie Boy likes to say, how do you win an FTL? Well, get a free flak or buy hacking. One of those two or both, and you'll be guaranteed to win. You know. Yeah, early weapons are there's like it's so much easier to win a run with just getting that first early weapon because mm -hmm. um, of mm -hmm. how the scaling goes, where it's like sector one, one shield, two, one shield, three goes to two shields, but then it jumps right to three shields in sector four. And it's like mm -hmm. your weapons get pretty outpaced on most ships very quickly. Well, it looks like Freddy is about to go into the boss fight, so he's a good sector and a half to two sectors ahead so let's let's take a look at freddy as he's starting phase one of the boss right at 50 minutes here so it looks like he's going for the shield hack he has his mind control hack which i'd say that's a pretty good hack from the boss 
Yeah, if you're not worried too much, like I said, about the crew kills. Uh, so hacked mind control never lasts long enough for your crack, your mind control crew member to break a system. Even mm -hmm. so, you're good there. One yeah. thing that he didn't do that I've been criticized on some of my YouTube videos recently is going into the boss fight with power in your mind control. Because if they hack your mind control and it's not powered, you actually can still use your mind control if it hasn't been, if it hadn't been powered apparently. So that's an interesting little note to mm. to take there. Or at the that. very least, that you're not, you don't have a power locked into a system that you can't use. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so, go ahead. Go ahead. No. Yeah. So uh, the flagship fights, the, the strategies are going to be a little bit different. Like Freddy's actually not getting the four beam swipe with the mini mm -hmm. beam because you can actually reach between missiles and then kind of split shields and uh, piloting uh, uh -huh. for that damage. Um, there's there's so many different strategies and things to consider for the flagship fight so one of the more interesting things though is uh so their weapons actually operate like artillery beams okay so the more power into them the faster they charge and okay. in phase one and two they're only three powered phase three they're four so if you do one damage to the missile weapon like it slows down its charge rate that your cloaking comes out of cooldown Oh, so okay. if you are trying to like well you know cruise kills and whatnot and want to prolong the fight you really only just need to be able to do like one damage consistently to the missile weapon and then take the rest of the time to try and kill the rest of the ship well it looks like he got i think only one crew kill phase one he had a really quick really quick phase one honestly um phase two he got he got the like you talked about the hacking bypassing that defense drone really quick so he's looking really strong to get a really fast boss fight. He's only taking one damage as well. But that was a double missile hit. Not the best right there. Yes. Um, I think, so again, really, it's the missiles are normally like the scariest part outside of like the surges, but you have cloaking to hopefully deal with the surges. Mm -hmm. Um, I would see for like this tournament though, that a lot of players are going to just kind of try and go for shields, get their defenses mm -hmm. down as fast as possible. Yeah. Maybe I'll take two, three hits or risk a fire. Cause boy, I think it's a 20% chance yeah. that those uh, missiles start missiles. fires. Mm -hmm. Yes. Single so, missile, double fire is one thing I yell at FTL. Yes. Single missile, double fire. <laughs> All the All time. Right. When you another, least want another to happen. Yeah. Another really good phase. Only three crew left. And He's gonna he's gonna be able to deal with this really quickly. So I'm really I'm really impressed with Freddy's uh, boss fight so far. Yeah. So like uh, went through that you know took down the shields. Um, mm -hmm. There's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit harder though. Uh, so he has to get through the 12 point Zoltan shield mm -hmm. and uh, the evasion's so much higher. It's only like level two engines in phase one, three, then he goes all the way to six in the final uh -huh. phase. Mm -hmm. All right, but uh, this looks like probably the last pair of borders he's going to have to deal with. So as long as he gets some clean clean cloaks on the overcharge, he's looking really good to be about a 54, 55-minute run right here, which is pretty darn fast, wow. I would say. Yeah, no, that's that's faster than any time I've gotten by a good amount. <laughs> yeah, I've been talking to Freddy. He's, he's, been, he's been trying to practice kind of faster runs because the, the lower that divisor, the higher your tournament score is going to be. Oh, yeah, divided, absolutely. Whatever. Yeah. Oh, the same Hermes missile. Uh, <laughs> yeah, turned it down. All right, all right, good, <laughs> he, he, good. Wow, he's turning down these free weapons. My mind is exploding from turning down free weapons. And there That's it is. Yeah, that GG. That is Freddy. Okay, so that should be a 54-minute run, I believe, for him. I'm going to write that down just to keep track here. So that's a pretty darn good run. 54 minutes. And Retreat Retreat is in Sector... Is he in Sector 6 going into yeah, Sector 6? Yeah, this seven? is the Sector 6 abandoned sector. Oh, Ooh, now do you take the automated ruler? No, going he for score. It. Wow, okay. I guess he's all in on score since timing-wise he is doing a slower run. Yeah. You know, I mean, hey, if you if you if you leave the tournament, but you're you'd be like, I don't know, if, if he gets like an 8k score, like that's legendary. <laughs> that, that's, that's true. If he can get an 8k score without score farming with dives, my mind will be blown. I would be like, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> didn't didn't get uh, didn't get distraction buoys to really help pad it out, but mm. interesting right. that distraction buoys would be one of the strong uh, things for for something like that, like just abs getting the most score you can get without you know farming. Uh, uh, taken over beacons. Yeah, I mean the earlier get it, it's just extra jumps, and hey, extra jumps means more money, mm -hmm. more fights. I found a lot at, for for a long time. I thought distraction buoys were worthless, but when I started getting it for free, I'm like, well, you know, if I get it for free, that's basically one free jump per sector after I get it. So 
that can be right. worth, especially you get it early, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, again, it depends. Because sure. it's like, or I could just sell it for a store, get 25 scrap, and then mm -hmm. I get something I actually want. <laughs> yeah. That might be good, too. <laughs> All right. So we retreat, retreat in uh, end of Sector 6. So he's going against... Oh man, these 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 ships with the uh, burst lasers and the missiles. These are some of the worst ships. There's no Zoltan shield to go along with it. But uh, when I see ships with this much weapon power, I start to get a little nervous. Yeah. So part of this is is, is like speed, but uh, retreat could have switched over to albeit what he's on a one hour timer now, correct? With uh, uh, Freddy having completed. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so he has he got one hour retreat. Um that you could just switch over to because he has the cloaking hacking and and four shots. You can essentially uh -huh. just hack with their weapons, cloak the volleys, and slowly, methodically, but eventually you'll you'll get through and you won't take any damage. Okay. Okay. Oh, we got the Lanius bomber. That's uh uh I, I don't know if that's the first or the second bomber he's seen. But uh he's got an interesting uh, I don't know if this was hyperspace, the little outline of the blue on the Lanius. Is that, does that look different than I'm used to seeing the kind of outline of the crew? Are you seeing that kind of different color? Yeah, I see the blue. Not something I'm particularly used to seeing, but could okay. be. That's, that's interesting. I, he said he's playing on an older laptop, so maybe there's something yeah. going on with that. But uh, he is he is still looking very strong. He doesn't have the mind control. He doesn't have nearly as many crew as Freddy does and no clone bay. So he's a little more susceptible to these boarding events, I feel like. Yeah. Oh, it's colorblind mode. Oh, it's colorblind yeah, I mode. Use colorblind. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's funny because I always use running like colorblind mode. There's like oh, there's so many things I just like don't notice like in uh -huh. games. Um, oh geez, I, I think like like a couple months ago I was just like oh like I think I, I screwed up a charge laser shot and they're like well no you fired it too soon and I was like yeah but where's my second shot or the charge time and they're like no when you fire your charge shot it uses the partial time on the next one and I was like oh okay yeah so I have three thousand hours and just learned that okay just gonna what was that close say, say, say that again because i'm not oh, sure so I understood it. charged weapon so like you, you know charges its first shot and starts charging for its next shot if you fire uh -huh. it you lose that partial charge like that's just oh, gone and okay. i three thousand hours like never occurred to me that that happened and it's just like oh that's a thing and then you know chat fills up with people like yeah how did you not know yeah you thing? didn't know that god everybody knows that <laughs> yeah sorry that's 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 one of the things when you stream Turn a game like FTL, FTL credentials. It, it's so deep that it's like no matter how many hours you're gonna learn that. Oh, I don't know. I don't know everything in this game. There's there's so many little things, little strategies like that O2 hack on the boss fight that Farb did that Britnoff came up with. Uh, it's just just it's mind blowing and awesome to me that there's still people learning so much about this game. Yeah, and I I think part of that is you know again we're talking about a game that came out nine years ago that mm -hmm. we're still playing, that we're still mm -hmm. playing. And there's now like really good information um, uh, as like more players just, I don't know, take it seriously, try hard, however you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And that they develop these strategies so other players can kind of pick up those strategies and use them. And then so you have, like I said, we went from five people having completed cycle streaks two years ago to now 16. Mm-hmm. Like there, and I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, like more people come along. Oh yeah, uh, with absolutely. The, with those kinds of things, you know, who are. This tournament kind of getting more people involved and building the community that we'll see some players that we didn't even know had already done that. And we get to see them show their skills. Cause it'll be awesome to see what kind of new strategies and things people are doing that we just haven't seen before. All right. So Freddie got a 58.99. Wow. 58.99. score right there i'm gonna let kasalin do the numbers because i'm bad at math <laughs> yeah, stream I, I, math stream is bad you know <laughs> yeah yeah and it's a good thing because like math has no importance in ftl at all it just <laughs> kind of there there there's um i think mike has like a math degree and i think uh burrito also has done like has done like really? math so they're yeah it's fun okay. watching them because they're just sitting here and they're like all right so i got this charge time 0.32 sec seconds has been removed from it because of the reloader in this fight and staggering <laughs> and like this is the time frame of the shield charge bubble and i'm just like or you could just i just shoot them 
that's my strategy. That's my. That advanced sounds like strat. a lot of work. What you just did right there. Yeah, what yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it makes sense and it's right, but <laughs> I just, I just pull the trigger and it goes pew. Uh, <laughs> I cloak when they shoot at me. That's about as far as I think. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good strategy. I'm gonna write that one down too. Cloak <laughs> when shot at. <laughs> All right, we got another one of these Lanius bombers with that double uh, Lanius boarding crew. He's got, I'm going to guess he's got to just fight him in the heel bay. That's uh, no clone bay makes this a little scary, but I think the level two heel bay will make up for uh, the no O2 to fight those. Yeah, so this is like, this is like an area I, I would have no idea. I would have no idea if level two med bay with level two oxygen can help fend off against two Lanny borders. It's just not something that like i do very often mm -hmm. because who well there's goes to lane sectors there is well yeah who, who even goes to abandoned sectors uh i do know for um at least the o2 uh level 202 over uh can overtake one breach level 302 mm -hmm. is needed for two two breaches so because two lanius equals two breaches you know your no level 202 will not give you enough oxygen yeah but in combination with your level two heal base since he fought in there he he knew he could handle that but whoever buys level 302, I mean, who does it? Or level two med bays. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's not right. very common. Um, yeah, and those two things even out. So like if you have no oxygen and a level one med bay, you just, you don't heal or get hurt. It just stays yeah. exactly the same. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so he's he's really committing to getting as many jumps out of every sector. And, and I like this because if you, if you are slower in time, the way you make up for it in the score is you you got to farm more scrap. So this is a good strategy. He knows he's a slower time, so he's really min-maxing how much scrap gains he can get here. And it's surprising that he doesn't have mind control. I think he's, like you said, maybe skipping stores just to get as much scrap as he can get out of every single sector. Right, right. I mean, again, uh, it's, you're just kind of like showcasing what, retreat is all about like uh, yeah. is is kind of like said known as being the the score, score farmer. person yeah yeah and you said he has over what did you say eight thousand for every single ship yeah every single ship has an 8k score on and then broke nine thousand with uh with the crystal b I, I remember trying really hard just to break 7k at one point in time mm -hmm. i'm i i have i probably have like maybe 20 or 30 so 7k runs in total but no I, i've never cracked 8k let alone is, nine. Yeah, no kidding. Is, the, is is that with um going back and forth in dives or is this without? I would assume he had to have done some dive score farming. Um so it wasn't it wasn't farming elites where you just like keep jumping back and forth between the same fight with like uh -huh. uh, memorable weapons. Um I don't know if he actually killed any dive ships or not, which okay. is where you'd only get the score, because if you're diving in FTL and you kill that ship, the only thing you get from it is one fuel. You never get any scrap. Right. Unless you're out of fuel, then I think you get two. Yeah, I believe two, two or three, something like that. Yeah, um, so yeah, he's been diving. He's dove, he's dove at least three of the sectors I think I've seen. So he is going all out with his diving. I was curious to see if people would use this strategy if they have like particularly superior weapons, where because you can dive three times in a sector, uh -huh. might as well dive three times in a sector again mm -hmm. using the formula. That's like thirty points a kill but again it, it goes up to like how much time it's going to take you to kill that fight and that inherently being worthwhile to do so mm -hmm. yeah and that's one of the things i was really curious is how, how are those strategies gonna match up because it seems like most players have found that the faster the time the better your score is but i don't know that i've seen anybody who's really gone all in on the, the other side of it, the farming the score as much as you can within the rule set that we've put into place. So this is kind of kind of right from the get to go. We get to see retreat the score farming guru, apparently kind of using his strategy and see see how see how it matches up with the kind of faster time uh, run that Freddie went with. Yeah, um, so right, because there's so many different ways you can get crew kills and some of them are just way faster than others, but they might not be available for certain ships. Mm -hmm. um, like one really good example, like a fast crew kill is one uh, Scott used to do a lot of, which is you do mind control hacking piloting if they only have two crew. Okay. Uh -huh. So if you if you mind control piloting, two crew respond um, unless they're doing like repairs. So uh -huh. the crew go up into piloting, you hack piloting down, no evasion, and then you just dump every single weapon you have into their piloting, which okay. has no dodge, and you just mm -hmm. get a crew kill. And often that can be faster than actually trying to just shoot down the ship. 
Wow. Okay. That is rather interesting. Does if you're shooting everything at the piloting, the other crew is locked out of piloting, right? Well, you, you, you let them in into there? piloting, then ah, you lock okay. them in there. So, you know, of course, if you get, okay. get a fire, maybe that gets the job done. And like okay. I said, that can be like essentially just like it's a one volley strategy. So it's okay. as fast as anything um, versus something like, you know, I think Dolphin Chemist once took, I think it was 35 minutes to get an O2 kill with NGB <laughs> in Sector 1. <laughs> wow. Well, I will say I'm very surprised uh, Retreat Retreat took. He had a choice between Abandoned and another Red Sector. I didn't see what it was. He took Abandoned Red Sector 7. So he is, without mind control, ready to take on more Lanius Bombers. With his weak weapons, I'm honestly very surprised that he took this choice. Yeah, again, uh, just, you know, might feel comfortable. Uh, there probably isn't a ship out there that just outright kills him. Um mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, this fight is going on pretty long, but his FTL is here. What he has level seven engines, six, yeah, seven, he, seven, eight. He's almost maxed. Yeah. Going for the, the Reddit engines. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I assume they have a vote. Like we'll just, that's the tiebreaker. We just let Reddit vote on who, what <laughs> ship was the best representation of Reddit values. And they just get to move on to the next round. <laughs> we'll float yeah, that. We, we'll float that idea. We, we'll we'll see. We uh we we talked about we should give extra score for meme runs. If you get the double glaive meme or the double Vulcan, you know, I feel like that should get you some extra points, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I think with certain exceptions like like firebomb and stun bomb, like that that's Farb's go to. So that, I don't think it's technically a meme if that's your like go to strategy. Um, I don't know. A stun bomb is always a meme. I don't know about you, but it's always a meme to me. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's it's really bad. I can't stress <laughs> enough how bad stun bomb is. But sometimes you do need to use a stun bomb. Yeah. Just just don't tell anybody I said that. Yeah, I'll tell Pie Boy because he he memes a lot on the on the uh, on the the value of the stun bomb. Uh, retreat, retreat <sighs> is he is uh, he's having some slow fights. Uh, Lanius bombers. We got hacking and weapons. I think that's my least favorite hack. Anytime my weapons are hacked, I'm just like, well, I got to sit here for an extra ten minutes, you know? Yeah. Uh, again, we, we, the uh, like that first volley, like oh, I just got to hit them and then mm -hmm. you know go from there. But now I can't because I have to wait for the hack. Uh, it's particularly annoying in flagship fights. Uh, which is yeah. one of the reasons why like, if you have a defense drone against the flagship fights, uh, I'm of the mindset that I just let their hack land um, okay. and, you know, just roll with knowing like what it is that I'm going up against. Mm -hmm. um, because if you do try to shoot it down and you don't have like cloaking for the missiles, sometimes your defense drone, Steven, uh, yeah. uh, misses, doesn't do his job, you know, for whatever reason uh and then that hack lands on your weapons and suddenly that flagship hack cloak cycle is desynced and your mm -hmm. weapons just never fire i i go back and forth with that i actually have this discussion almost every time that i have a defense drone against the boss i ask chat what do you think do we use the defense drone to try to shoot down every hacking drone or do we let it go and i've, I've never heard a definitive answer from anybody saying i've tested and this is on the whole better i don't know if there is a uh, at buy yeah uh, i don't know if there is a definitive better strategy when it comes to uh you know defense yeah. or not phase one i think if you like I said, if you have cloaking that makes the decision a little bit easier because you can just cloak through the missiles and then your you know your defense drone isn't there uh you do have to mm -hmm. wait through eight hacks like that's how many drone <laughs> parts the flagship fight has is uh, eight yeah okay. um so yeah like i said that that's sometimes those things just time up in that way uh where it's a concern um if you're really good with pause you can kind of see where the hack is landing and hey if sure it's like, yeah if you're you know heading towards your sensors or whatever it is then yeah i guess get your sensors hacked all right. Well, um, Retreat Retreat has got a crazy good defense. That might be why he's not afraid to take on an abandoned sector. He's got max shields, almost maxed engines, and level two cloaking. I'm curious if he'll even go to a store to even look for mind control now. If he's all in on the, the I'm going to get as much scrap as possible, not take a single store you know, approach here. Because he's passed a couple free weapons and things, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, that, right. That, that's for the... Uh... As you said, like the, the score, because it's just less. Oh, but it's also down to six drone parts. That mm. can't feel good, because this build is going to be very reliant on, uh, you know, drone parts getting through the shields. Yeah, I like to float around. If if I don't have drone control to use up drone parts as well, I like to float at least around ten, 
Because if I'm planning on using one drone part, a, a fight, that's where I feel comfortable. If I start getting below that and I'm relying on my hacking for, you know, my offense getting through shields, I started to get a little scared. Yeah. Um, I definitely like somewhere in the seven to eight range if I'm using hacking pretty aggressively. Like the decision starts becoming like, oh, like this is a safe fight. I could crew kill if I hack, uh -huh. but like now yeah, the numbers are too low. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are like certain zip builds, particularly if you're going through like where you're just all in on beam weapons, trying to go for that one shot. Uh, uh -huh. then yeah, you, you definitely got to hold on to those, those hacking parts to, you know, get through and actually kill ships. And this is an interesting event. I, this is one thing that I like to sometimes mention on my stream is in abandoned sector, when you see, um, what is it? The, I think it's, a uh, danger, but it's an ASB here. That's like the one event in the game where it's a guaranteed ASB in your favor. I believe, right. if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in the abandoned sector, that ASB means they're actually going to help you for once. And there's the mind control. There we go. Oh, I guess, oh, I sold stun bomb, but we. Oh, <laughs> I know, I know. Chad's very disappointed right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, stun bomb. Uh, I, I got to say, the weapon choices have been pretty darn bad. We haven't seen any halberds. We haven't seen any flax. It's all burst laser ones and the starting weapons for both players. It's been pretty bad weapon RNG this run. Yeah, but again. This ship can totally get away with it. That's true. I mean, Freddy, Freddy got through and, and was able to demonstrate just like said these these weapons are just incredibly strong. The starting weapons with this particular ship. I feel like I used to undervalue mini beam because um, because of how fast it is, it's a lot better than I used to think it was. Um, I always thought you know oh, it's only four damage on the boss fight, but it's you know four damage for one power, and that's really darn good. Right. Uh, it's always difficult to kind of evaluate FTL weapons in part because it's like, you know, a, a tier list or whatever it is, because mm -hmm. you only get what you get. Like, you, it's not like, oh, well, I'm going to consult the tier list and choose between all the weapons and pick the one that <laughs> yeah. I want. Uh -huh. um, and then there are ones like mini beam only starts on two ships. So, you know, where does that lie? And mm -hmm. without hacking, how good is mini beam? It goes right. down considerably. Mm hmm. Because it's like, well, I got I got three weapon slots, even two burst laser twos setting up a mini beam without hacking doesn't feel very safe. And yeah, uh -huh. you would want to switch over to something like a halberd beam to get in that more likely to get in those damages or the more damage. Mm -hmm. I, I retreat retreat has had probably more lanius bombers because I'm pretty sure we didn't see a sector seven abandoned from Freddy. I think he took the slightly uh, safer route. Um, so he's really having to deal with these Lanius bombers this this run. Yeah, I thought he got he got forced into like a rock sector seven. Yes, or maybe he chose I think you're right. sector I think seven you're right. for some reason chose rocks over Lanius, which again most people would do like all yeah. the time. Um, yeah, since but, you have the missile defense, yeah. Yeah, but I, I I guess retreat like I said is just kind of going all in uh, on the score. Has a lot of buffer points and weapons. It's great. You know, if you don't wow, need to buy I anything, just realized. <laughs> if you don't need to buy anything, just or yeah. buffer points and weapons. There you go. That might be the most buffer points and weapons I've seen on a non-modded ship. <laughs> so uh, might be able to get like a fully upgraded ship. And normally, if you get a fully upgraded ship in FTL, you're looking at a, at a 7K score run. Oof. This is really interesting. This is of all the practice runs we've done, nobody has kind of farm score without diving like this and it's i mean he's dived a couple times of course but to actually be so um kind of min max with the amount of scrap gains he's getting is really impressive to see for retreat retreat even though he's playing slower with pause that's going to be a really high score yeah i hope so <laughs> i mean it, it has to be right with uh <laughs> with yeah full get, power weapon shields Oof. Yeah, it, it can be a little difficult to predict. Uh, I, I've had runs where I was like, oh, that was definitely like seven K. Okay, five. <laughs> I was close. Yeah. I, how did that happen? <laughs> um, you know, well, I guess there's... that's the question. We need to start uh, trying to trying to predict retreat retreat score here with uh, with how much scrap he's looking at. And he's not even in Sector 8 yet, you know? Yeah, and sector again, sector A is one of those sectors where um, I think I was watching Billy Kirby yesterday had like a zero scrap sector eight. I had this wow. like really strong run and then and then just had like a no scrap sector eight. It was, it I don't was, know if I've ever seen a zero sec uh, scrap sector eight. How 
was everything taken over? Did he have all empty jumps? What, what, I think it was just that? like, yeah, it was just like empty jumps or, you know, repair stations and just like, OK, well, I guess going to the flagship with no additional money that what I started the sector with. Wow. Well, that's that's probably pretty bottom of the barrel luck. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's... <laughs> FTL, uh, you know, RNG can swing one way or the other. Um, I think I once got like one of my best score runs wasn't with a, like the, you assume the Crystal B gets you like the best runs, which is also why Crystal Crew members are banned uh, or ships with oh, Crystal yeah. Crew members are banned for this tournament uh, mm -hmm. because like just adding a whole nother sector just is a ton of RNG uh, uh -huh. that has to be considered. Um, so yeah, normally it's like a little bit easier. Uh, to get you know 7k scores or whatever with those crystal ships because if you get to the crystal sector from rock home world it's a whole another sector so it's just oh, a bunch yeah. of more fights bunch more scrap mm -hmm. uh, depending on where you find the beacon but i actually got like a 7700 scrap uh 7700 score run with like um a zoltan a i wasn't even doing like crew kills or anything it was just like nebula sectors lining wow. up perfectly a bunch of civilian sectors and it was just like Did you oh. have long range scanners i would assume for a run like that i think i had long range scanners yeah okay um but yeah it was just like oh like here's just all the money you know and of course then the flip side is you get through first three sectors and you're like behind 200 scrap from where you want to be mm -hmm. i'm honestly pretty surprised that retreat retreat hasn't gone into level three cloaking with all with with four value points and weapons, he could get level three cloaking and like level two backup battery and basically never get hit. I guess maybe he's not really getting hit with this dodge anyway. Okay, there's the Reddit engines. He did it. He did Yay, it. Hey, we got there. <laughs> <laughs> but like I've I've actually found that level three cloaking can can be really strong um, in certain situations. Do you get yeah. level three cloaking very often? So I used to not be the biggest proponent of a uh, level three cloaking because um, it was always this idea that you just wanted level one cloaking for the flagship fights. Mm -hmm. You just want because like of how most of the timings typically worked out. Um, but I kind of switched towards getting the level three cloaking again with the hacking cloaking combination to just shut down enemy weapons for the entire fight. Mm -hmm. Just be like, all right, the fight is safe and or like I could just run away from it uh, is pretty valuable particularly if you're mm -hmm. trying to just consistently win not taking damage is a good route yeah. um and also uh, a strategy that i used and got picked up by a couple people i've uh Britnell says he used it and i see hollow use it don't know if they got it for me but is doing the level three cloak in phase three um uh -huh. you drop your shields all the way down in phase ah. three during the missiles coming in so you buy that much more time between that and the surge and then you just do a level three cloak and a good percentage of the time you'll actually cloak the missiles and the first surge that is... Britnoth did tell me about that the other day, and I'd never heard that. You you basically you take down all your shields so that you have that slightly extra, uh, I guess, missile travel time, right? To delay your cloaking a little bit longer is how that works. Yeah. Um, so the hit detection in FTL is if you have a shield up, as soon as it crosses the shield threshold, um, it'll say hit or miss. So if it already crosses that, don't don't try cloaking. It's already hitting you. It's, yeah, it's gonna happen. Um, <laughs> But if you don't have a shield bubble up, then yeah, it's like right over where the system is. So it's uh, uh, aside from just using it for the flagship fight, like if your cloaking's just about to come off cooldown, go ahead, just depower your shields, buy yourself a few extra frames, and then you can just cloak through it. That is interesting. Is that is that something you came up with? Um, I I've used it before. I I don't know if it was where you get all the information from. Like, I know it's hard to say. Know, if I've learned this from somebody else and. There's so much information in the community out there now. <laughs> if it's a really good strategy, I definitely came up with it by myself and got no hope. We're gonna from we're start calling it the crow maneuver, right? Mm -hmm, right, right. But I mean, yeah, you know, I I like I started by watching Lethal Frag, mm -hmm. um, Me too. and then That's like right. you know, Twinge, all the other broadcasters that I've mentioned, and it's just like, oh, like you know, you pick in pieces, and eventually you get good, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, because there were things that I used to do because I learned from Frag. Like, I, I I believe at one point he said he never changes from Heal Bay to Clone Bay, which I think you talked about, mm -hmm. because he finds that scrap more useful elsewhere. But what I found in Harbo No Pause is a lot of times the kind of the security of not losing crew, especially on a boarding run, but even just in a lot of Harbo No Pause runs, of that Clone Bay is often worth that extra 50 scrap. The, the caveat is if you can afford it with your offense and defense, you know? So there have been right. some few things I've changed after seeing some of the no-pause uh, uh, streamers out there. 
yeah so like no pause is something like i said i'm i'm not familiar with it uh, i remember when i first heard they're like oh there's some like no pause that tail streamers in your head kind of just turns to the side wait what now <laughs> they do what <laughs> Is it is it like broken or something? And like, no, no, no. They just <laughs> they just turned it into a real time strategy game. Okay, but it's already really hard. Why would you do that? <laughs> and then I'm gonna go practice golf runs. But yeah, that that's where I draw the line is the, uh, <laughs> the idea of the no pause playing. Um, yeah. But yeah, so there definitely are some strategies for that no pause players kind of lean towards because again, you can't do the same level of micro that pause mm -hmm. players can you you are leaving out a good chunk of strategy uh-huh um you know some drop out more strategy than others i mean watching hollow play it's it's like wow he does more micro than some pause players that i've actually yeah. seen yeah. um and there's lots of little tricks and tips with that so yeah sometimes switching to clone bait particularly for boarding i think they really favor it because it can get very difficult to having to micro all the crew make sure their health is correct yeah um what's interesting to me about no pause is i found my um kind of weapon tier list changed a little bit because halberd beam is still amazing but having multiple beams when you cannot pause to aim your beams becomes a real big micro challenge because if you if you're hacking, but you have to get a perfect swipe, you have to make very precise movements with your mouse. And if you don't have that pause to give you that time, you often don't get the optimal swipe. And so I've started to undervalue certain beams over like uh, you know other good weapons like flax or burst laser twos because the micro requirement is higher. So it's interesting what what extra difficulty that throws in. Yeah, you, you kind of have to try it in Zoro it if you got you you beam normally we, like because we're creatures have we start with like okay this is where I always put the beam and I do mm -hmm. this swipe and then I go back to the starting point and I do it again mm -hmm. but you actually have to go that way and then you just zip it back to, to try get it in there and that's if not if you're doing like you said like those really precise swipes like you're just trying uh -huh. to get those four rooms or uh, you're doing cheeky swipes. Yes. Um, <laughs> so that was really brought into the forefront by uh, Mursala and uh it it's a strategy where you actually take a beam and you splice it in between rooms mm -hmm. uh, for those people who aren't familiar with it um and the general setup is you like you go between two two rooms like so here just it, you wouldn't do it on the ship protect but uh it would be like between the cloak or the uh, clone bay and piloting you start okay. in piloting and you drop below and just as soon as it highlights in clone bay like that's where you want to start the beam swipe and you just run it uh parallel uh -huh. and if you do it correctly no rooms are highlighted Okay. And then you fire it and it actually hits all the adjacent rooms. Okay. So you can actually get some higher damage swipes with that. Uh, the problem, depending if you look at it, is it actually is a little bit bugged and sometimes it'll register it hitting the same room twice. Really? And so you yeah. get double damage on a room from a single beam swipe, is that yeah, right? Yeah, so you can actually get double damage on a room. Um, it's really precise. Uh, there's, there's some post... Uh, and like a whole video, like Masal put like a whole package together so you can just kind of study it. And okay. but like it allows Halberd Beam to get a 10 damage swipe on the wow. flagship uh, by putting it uh, again. Traditionally, you go missiles piloting, but you actually mm -hmm. go from like med bay across and oh, it double. Okay. And what's nice about that swipe is it's because of uh, the placement so tight, it, it does like forces you to make sure you get the double swipe damage. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, so you can get 10 damage from Halberd Beam, which makes, you know, the one shot builds a lot easier. Yeah, now I'll have to check that out because I've I've seen cheeky sweep swipes. I've tried to mess with them a little bit, but it's so precise that I'm like, oh, I'm frustrated. I can't do it. So it'd be, it'd be interesting to see how some experts on those cheeky swipes like on this ship if you were trying to cheeky swipe would it be like weapons across shields right along that line yeah you, you just kind of one? like split between those and you can get five six damage on the swipe okay instead of your like again with the normal one would be just like a four room swipe uh-huh yeah yeah so uh billy kirby does it a little bit um because which billy kirby is uh you know also has two cycle plus streaks uh um, also does uh, speed running. Was doing speed runs. I believe has the yeah. second fastest time and the first fastest without using pre ignite or using the yeah. Zoltan A. And yeah, yeah the the Halber beam to get the ten damage swipe on the flagship was part of it. So um, Billy will probably bust it out a couple times if you uh, want to see some live examples of it. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's the full upgrade. I there we go. That was the final upgrade. So you said when you get the full upgrade, that's usually around a seven K score. Yeah, that think? should be seven K. Oh, I. Oof. 
this is definitely going to be a very high scoring ship. <laughs> um, and what's really great is he has level three sensors, which I know uh, Thomas is a super big fan of the swag sensors. Uh, they're really <laughs> important, uh, particularly the flagship fight where it hacks those sensors so you can't see how it's cheating. So and, they're the uh, most actually useless upgrade in the entire game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are some blue options with level three sensors over level two, but yeah, you don't, you don't need level three sensors. Yeah, yeah pretty much the only time I get level three sensors is if uh, the one event that uh, if you don't have teleporter and it's the Mantis Homeworlds, you can get Kazak with level three sensors if you don't have the teleporter. That's right. like the only, because I love Kazak so much, mm -hmm. that's the almost the only time I'll ever, unless I have nothing else I could buy at this the, the swag centers you 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 wastrels wasting your scrap <laughs> yeah you, you you send 75 scrap upgrading your sensors and then 35 scrap upgrading your your med bay and uh -huh. you can get a mantis a mantis That's... and a free weapon no and free weapons true true um i might value you know because mantis who can you know eat humans a little too highly because you know we must vent and eat all the humans in 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 the galaxy <laughs> yeah it is. It is interesting that 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 that's like across the board. Everybody just hates humans. It's like the only unifying thing in all of FTL is everyone's just like ah, humans. <laughs> the unifying theme is we all hate the race that we're a part of. That's, that's... Yeah, you only got one blue option. You don't do anything really well. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I guess. All right. Uh, okay. So he's. I think this is the last fight before the boss fight, and he is. A good, this is looking about 32 minutes behind right now, but if his scrap gains are as high as we think they're going to be, I'm very interested to see how these scores are going to compare to the final tournament scores. Yeah, uh, I don't think we've, uh, you know, I, I've done a little bit of testing on my own. Uh, mm -hmm. Try to run like, you know, this try to run like the same seed, see if you get different results. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, to see like, it's going to be a fairly large discrepancy between time and score between these two runs. Because like I said, we uh -huh. see Freddy still at the, you know, essentially 5,900 and Retreat's going to be, could be 1,200, 1,300 more points. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to be really interesting. Could be about a, it's looking like it might be around a 40 minute difference between them, depending on how fast this boss fight goes. So let's check out fully upgraded ship with only four weapon power <laughs> versus the boss. Let's see what hack he gets. So he gets the heal hack. So with seated, I think this is one thing we talked about. I think Freddy got mind control hack in phase one. Right, that's true. Um, but one thing I will say is if they take different paths, I would guess that would uh, affect the seating of what the boss does. Um, if it's truly random or if it's actually seated, the mind control hack. Because I think this is one thing we discussed in uh, in Discord and stuff too, is how uh, how seating would affect things like those random things. Right. Yeah. So uh, I know Math Chap and uh, Math Champ and mm -hmm. the people who have been working with uh, the Hypermod have just done like a really phenomenal job. Um, you know, trying to get the seeds to be consistent, make sure they're mm -hmm. they're you know, the removal of the bugs to get it so that it's actually ready for the tournament. And yeah, I think it's it's interesting outside of just the like normal tournament is that idea that you can run a seed with a ship multiple times and be like, uh -huh. okay, so I died this run. Could I have done it differently? Like where were the uh -huh. points that I made like a crucial decision uh -huh. and choose something else? So I, I personally, uh, I'd only seen it one time, but I want I want all the seeds that people lost on and the ship that they <laughs> lost it with. And then uh -huh. I want to run that seed myself and see if I can come out victorious. That's really cool. Yeah, I, I do have to give a big shout out to MathChamp and to the other hyperspace devs for, uh, we have some cool surprises from the hyperspace devs later on this week that we're really mm -hmm. excited to share because they've kind of partnered with uh, Irie, Kassalian, and uh, all, 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 all of us putting this together. We're gonna have some cool surprises with some new hyperspace stuff soon. So just a teaser about we're gonna we're gonna hear some new stuff that the modders have been working on because they've done an amazing job helping put this mod pack together. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not something I had been very cognizant of just the, how big the modder community is with uh, FTL. Mm -hmm. I was just like, well, I just I'm just trying to beat it regularly, and that's enough of a challenge for me. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, there's you know multiple mods of just dramatically overhaul the game. Uh, Captain's Edition exists. Mm -hmm. Multiverse exists. Yeah. Uh, I recently started using, uh, playing some Arsenal Plus. Oh, yeah. That's got yeah. some really cool new weapons and, and crew things. That's a really yeah. cool one. But I, I've, I've noticed that they don't seem, they, they seem to have like 
think that people have too much fuel because they either raise the price of fuel or they make <laughs> for fuel use for other things. Yeah. I'm always running out. Yeah, that's that's one of my biggest issues with Captain's Edition is what is it? I think if you use one fuel, you lose a jump. If you lose two, if you use two, you get normal, and you have to use like three, and you get an extra jump. So it's like yeah, oh yeah, you can use two, <laughs> and you get an extra jump or none, and then you lose a jump, and it's like. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you get like level four engines, then you can actually just like essentially use it as distraction buoys. Yeah, you just get an extra jump every sector. Some interesting, cool stuff that the the FTL modding community is is one of the most active that I've seen in 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 many games, and that's why I love to try different people's ships. And I I don't play some of those other mods like Captain Edition because of how punishing they can be, but I like to explore them at least once or twice to see see what kind of crazy stuff they added. Yeah, I, I made them a community goals because for some reason, and I don't, I don't know if you've experienced this with your FTL chat, but like they want the broadcaster to suffer. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Oh, okay. So it's this. not just me. I was concerned. No. <laughs> I figured everybody else, they just root on like, yeah, you got them. And like, I hope it's a really easy run. <laughs> no, for some reason, they love it when I rage and yell at FTL and, and go, Oh man, you mean you didn't get hit with that missile when you had 99% dodge? Oh, I was just waiting for that to hit your weapons right yeah. right then. Maybe it's just cross contamination. It's like the <laughs> same people just move back and forth between the two. <laughs> All right, so we got phase 2 for retreat retreat. Yeah, so here Successful. we see the uh the hacking bypass. So you just mm -hmm. you toggle off the the hack as it's about to be shot on by the defense drone and their shot was trying to track where your drone was going you know so it sails in front of and then you just re-engage your hack and it locks onto the system you were going for and he's actually aiming at uh, missiles here so he's going to try to take missiles offline here he got a lot of crew kills phase one so that was he kind of took it slightly slower let that fire in the shield room take out a lot of crew phase one which i like yeah, that, that's a good, really good that standard strategy. If you can just get a fire, um, particularly if I have like four weapon ships or yeah, four weapon slots on the ships, if you can find like a fire bomb, a fire beam, and you can just kind of like put it in there to just try and get that easier phase one so you don't have to deal with the, the boarding events in phase three, it just makes that fight a whole lot safer. Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. This is, uh, this is going super well. Uh, he is... Ooh, does he get another crew kill? I'm, I'm wondering, he might delay this to get even maybe one or two more crew kills here. Although you got to be careful. If you kill all the crew, then you're making phase three a little bit tougher, turning it into an auto uh, ship. Yeah, so it, it does turn into an auto ship, which technically means it has a little bit more evasion than if you left one crew on board, because auto ships are considered to have man bonuses on all their systems that can mm -hmm. allow for it to happen. Um... So yeah, it's like a 5% difference in mm -hmm. evasion that you uh, you have to deal with, but it also has like the same repair thing. So instead of like one person trying to repair at normal speed, then it's like everything gets repaired at a third to normal speed. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I did get a message from Kisalen. We got our first donation for the stream. So Ooh. thank you to Pipifax. Says, wishes everyone a lot of fun for the tournament. Thank you so much for the donation. Again, donations are, this is a uh, for charity event. So the donation is going to the Eleonoran uh, Foundation in Switzerland. So thank you so much, Pipifax, for that donation. Yeah, nice. Uh, so I could speak a little bit about uh, crew kills. Uh, yeah, that go for it. Particularly, when, so your weapons essentially deal like 15 times base damage to mm -hmm. the crew that they that are in the room, unless it's a beam weapon, then it has to actually track through the tile that they're walking through. There's right. a couple exceptions, like breach bomb deals 30, fire bomb deals 30. Um, I don't think we got to see it this run. I doubt we'll get to see it, but you can actually do like bio beam swipes where because the damage gets registered when the beam like first actually hits the room, if you start the beam before the shields are actually taken down by shots, mm. So you start the beam, then the shield gets dropped down by shots, and then the beam continues through the tile that crew is standing through. You can actually deal crew damage without dealing hull damage. Yes, and I believe that's called a bio swipe, I think some people yeah, call Yeah, the bio beam strategy. swipe. Uh-huh. And, uh, okay, well, retreat, retreat. Okay, so <laughs> he's got full upgrades and 227 scrap. This has def definitely been a, a scrap farming run. Yeah, yeah, I know. That, that's good, you know. Uh, it's for the after party celebrations. <laughs> it's really nice. He's going to buy beer and dinner for everybody with that extra scrap, I guess. Excellent. <laughs> All right. So we are coming up. I'm going to be tracking his time. I know that uh, Kisalian is doing it too, but I want to kind of keep track of our comp comparison here. So he's killed all crew except one. 
He actually didn't cloak the first volley. I wonder if he chose to cloak the first missile volley instead of the first overcharge volley for this final phase. Yeah, th there's... I, I've seen both. Um, some people really value ch cloaking the, m the missiles initially, uh, mm -hmm. just because, again, that the three shots early plus the starting of the fires can just make it so much nastier mm -hmm. uh, of a fight. Um, All but right, yeah, then the other way. There it works. is. All right, so that is... 135, 33. I think that rounds. I'm going to let that up to Kasalem, but 135, 30. Wow. 30-ish there with a... There it is. 76, 60. Whew, all right. We're going to really get to see what, uh, <laughs> what time or score is going to be worth more here. That's an amazing run. I got to say for Rudrick. Yeah. That is a I'll, super I, high score. I think the 46, 34 was uh, on easy mode. <laughs> that he has from most scrap collected. Wow! So twenty five eighty seven for this for this uh, this this run. That is that is a lot of scrap. Uh, ships defeated seventy three. I think if I have fifty, I, I'm looking good. So that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, so, all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we just like the two differences between score where somebody went through, took their time, got the crew mm -hmm. kills, dove aggressively, and uh, yeah, ended up with geez, almost. 2,000 more? It's yeah, almost 2,000 more. more scrap. No, well, that's amazing. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the tournament score is. Um, that is the end of our first run, and I'm going to say yep. thank you so much, Crow Ravel, for being here. I hope you had a good time casting. I really had a good time hanging out with you for the cast. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Again, thank you to you for hosting the event, all the people who are working backstage doing the, you know, Cassalian, Matt. Uh, I know they also have like some these really nice graphics with the ship flying in the background. Uh -huh. um, really appreciate it. And yeah, good luck to, and as well as the racers themselves, and good luck to everybody as the uh, tournament continues. I, I mean, unless you're playing me. No. Yes, good luck to you because you're playing tomorrow, correct? Yeah. And tell us, uh, tell everyone where we can find you, your Twitch channel and everything, so we can. Uh, yeah. We can so it's uh, it's just Crow Revel, C R O W R E V E L L, and uh, normally I stream uh, around midnight Eastern Standard Time, uh, three to four times a week. All right. Thank you again, sir. I look forward to seeing you play tomorrow, and good luck on your run. All right. Well, thank you. And Bye. everyone, we are going to be back in just a minute. Again, thank you all so much for watching. I'm so excited to see which score is going to be higher. So after a little bit of break while we get set up, we will reveal the scores and see who the winner is of our first round. Don't go away, because I believe we actually have uh, a little bit of a video here. So hang out. Oh, that I'm sorry. Not yet. We'll have a video after we reveal the score. So hang out. We'll be back just a bit, my friends.
All righty, my friends, we are back. And that was an amazing, amazing first round because we have two completely different strategies there. Freddie went fast and got as much score as he could. Retreat went slow and went crazy with the score. So I honestly don't know what the results are. So I actually kind of just want to jump right in and find out. So let's reveal uh, each score one at a time. First of all, let's show Freddie's score, I believe, first. He had a five... 899 nine scrap in 54 minutes, I believe. So let's see what Freddy's tournament score is. Uh, first of all, if uh, cassalian has got that. All right, that's a really good score. 222, uh, 227.22 is a really good tournament rating. Is that, how does that compare to your practice runs, Freddy? Hi, that's good. Yeah, I was, uh, anything over 200 I felt was good based on the spreadsheet mm -hmm. uh, of the logs that, that people were keeping. Uh, and then over 220, I felt like, yeah, that's definitely going to be a win. Uh, the funny thing is, is I finished so quickly, I logged into the stream afterward, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, yeah, I got this in the back. Like, I'm I'm already done with the flagship. You know, my opponent's in sector retreats in sector six. This is over. And then time goes by, and he's like, oh, uh, you know, he's got four weapon buffers, and uh, he's not even using them. And, and like and you guys are going, yeah, his score is going to be well over 7,000. I've never had a 7,000 score in my <laughs> life, let alone in a tournament. And I'm thinking, oh, well, now I'm dead. Now there's no way. But then hearing I got a 227, eh, maybe I got a shot. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what it is. Well, I got to say the suspense is killing me. So for Retreat Retreat, he had a 7660 FTL score, which is a crazy amount of scrap. And his time was, I believe, 135.30, something around there. So if Kassalian can reveal the rating and see how this compares, who do we have for the winner here? Drum roll, please. 232.99. All right. <laughs> Congratulations to Retreat Retreat. That is a crazy good score. How did you feel about that run, Retreat? Um, pretty standard, straightforward, still say run, like zero issues. I had weapons i had systems i had crew, like no problems like i said earlier just uh, kill everything you see and that's it well crow had mentioned that you do a lot of kind of you 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 have a lot of high scores on a lot of ships so this is kind of something you're used to doing this kind of play style is that right i mean yeah like i did the uh, eight thousand scores on all ships uh, like as a challenge like last year unfortunately well, that is awesome. unfortunately i had to delete the lots because like they got muted because of the music and stuff so uh, yes, DMCA, DMCA has, has hit a lot of us, I will say. <laughs> I mean, well, mob, mob, mob firepower would help, but it was sufficient. Like, I lost, like, a lot of time because I didn't really have enough firepower, but it was sufficient to win. Also, like, I didn't have mind control for a while. That also lost me a bunch of time. Also, I mean, like, first round of the tournament, so, like, a bit, uh, you know, a bit of, like, sweaty palms action, like, a bit uh, nervous. So like I kept like messing up my swipes and, st and stuff. So I'm not really happy with my play. Well, even though you're not happy, the score kind of shows that 232.90.99. Freddie, you did a lot of practice runs. Did we get many practice runs that got above 220 for uh, for preparing for the tournament? I not that I'm aware of. No, the 232 is the highest score I think I've heard of. Um based on the way i practice you know i didn't do a lot of calculations or, or score farming and whatnot i just kind of took the fights i could and then went as quickly as i could and that's how mm -hmm. i practiced and i was consistently scoring high so mm -hmm. obviously not the right approach so all the well, other is... players out there fyi heads up there you go you get to be the uh i guess the, the sacrificial, sacrificial lamb. guinea pig <laughs> the show that 
getting that high, as high score as you can really does have some value. So congratulations, retreat, retreat. That's you, you move on and that's a great score. So well done. And uh, are you excited about going on to the next round uh, tomorrow? I mean, sure. Let's see how things continue going. All right. Well, again, amazing job. Well played. Even if uh, you didn't get amazing weapons, the score was amazing. Uh, we have a special treat going into break before we go into our next match that I'm going to let uh, Freddy Z talk about. Can you let us know what we're going to get to see during this break for our little video uh, break here? <clears throat> Just a little TV show on the YouTube called FTL Castrol Adventure. I got to tell you, I did not know about this show uh, until eh, a few months ago, and it, it was popping up in my stream. Like, you got to watch FTL Castro Venture. You got to watch. It's like, oh, okay, I'll watch it. And it is excellent. Um, the humor is is just outstanding in it. It's very funny. It expands on sort of the FTL universe. Uh, it's made by a guy, Andrew Kalunga. And he started it in 2015, or at least that was when the first video was posted. And it's been ongoing. There's still actually one more episode coming out soon. And there's something like 39 episodes right now, each a few, uh, you know, 10 minutes long or something. So um, it's required viewing. And uh, we're going to watch a little intro video about uh, about the show. So don't go anywhere. Enjoy this Kestrel Adventures, Adventures clip. And when we come back in a little while, we will have our second run. So you all rock. We'll be back in just a bit, my friends. <laughs> 